Um, how effective is, uh, is COVID Shield against the UK variant? Uh, I ask that because one, one only assumes that it, it's a UK variant. It's certainly there in Punjab. That's a fact. The genome sequencing is happening. Uh, if it is there in other parts of the country, this is something that people would want to know. So let me try and answer your question in a, in a way that we're able to see the real results of this vaccine's efficacy. You know, there's been a lot of talk about different vaccines having 70%, 80%, 90%. By what is it? Then is it on the intervals? Is it more effective with three months, two months? So the proof is in, 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 in the real efficacy is when you give, as I've always mentioned, millions of people the vaccine across a region or a territory. Now, if we look at India alone, forget the other countries for a moment, we have supplied as I said, more than 100 million doses, most of which have been only the first dose injected into human beings. The claim of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine of being 90 plus, and in some countries 94% effective against hospitalizations has been validated because not only is it the Scottish public health and the UK public health that have put this on their websites, but it's visible now even in India. If we were to go and have a look at everybody in India who has admitted themselves for COVID-19 disease, hardly any of them have taken the vaccine. And if they have, it might be around 5%, which means that 95% of people who have taken the vaccine have experienced COVID disease, but not had to set foot into a hospital and experience severe disease, like going onto a ventilator, having your, your, your life um, at risk and all of that. So this really is very good data and proof that, you know, this vaccine, and it's a big relief to all of us that, you know, ultimately the real acid test is, does it prevent hospitalization? And the answer is yes. Okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's good news that, so essentially, let me just to try and uh, make sure that I'm getting this right, you are saying that the drug will protect you from hospitalization or serious illness if you contract any strain of COVID. And I asked you about the UK strain. Is that what you're saying? Well, so far, this is what we are seeing. And I don't want to make any off the cuff statement that, you know, against the South African strain, uh, UK strain, uh, it may be as good and protective. But so far, we have seen a lot of the UK strain enter India. We've seen a lot of people who have taken the COVID vaccine and still get infected with the UK strain, but we've seen they have been largely asymptomatic, which kind of sort of validates what I'm saying here. But again, if you asked me this question in January of this year, I could not say this with confidence. Today, we're able to say this against the original Wuhan strain, you know, and as time goes on, if you ask me the same question in two months time, we will have had enough experience of COVID shield in other countries and in India to say how well it's working toward the South African strain and the UK strain. Right. And the reason for us to believe that at least against severe hospitalizations, you know, our vaccine should be very, very good. Now, is it going to be 94, 95%? I don't know. But, you know, it's not that it's going to have a very mild level of protection. It's going to be good protection. What about... Um altering, uh, changing uh, the vaccine itself to cater for new variants. Is that something that uh, AstraZeneca Oxford is looking at? So we're looking at two things, not only tinkering with the vaccine to be even more receptive to the South African and other uh, vir vir virulent and other uh, mutant variants. Yes. But we're also doing trials to go under the age of 18 which is something everyone has been waiting for. Uh, you know, Pfizer and other companies have already started showing good data for their vaccines uh, at the lower age group. So we're doing trials to demonstrate both um, efficacy against these mutant variants and in a lower age group. I would wait six months at least before we can say it's safe and effective for these two new sort of areas that we're looking to, to cover. 
Would that actually require trials in India as well among children when you're ready to do them? Or would the UK data, as in the last case, uh, be only one part of the data and then, you know, you do bridging trials here? Maybe. I mean, because, you know, the initial safety and efficacy has been established. Now it's only safety and maybe immunogenicity that would need to be demonstrated in the children or, you know, below 18. Maybe a small study in India, maybe not. We don't know yet because we haven't applied to the regulator. We'll go by what they, they suggest is right. Um, we are waiting for the UK at least to make some headway in this, and then we will, um, you know, uh, act accordingly and see what to do.